Welcome to Sip This, a weekly presentation of original comedy from the Tam Valley Players, those fine folks who bring you the annual Murder Mystery Dinner Theater and the Rhubarb Review. Join us here every Friday night at 7. Be sure to like our Facebook page and give a thumbs up on our YouTube page. And now, please welcome tonight's hosts, Lorraine DeChico and Brianna Murphy. Welcome to Bronx Beat, where you host Lorraine DeChico and Brianna Murphy. Hello, hello, hello. Now, you may have noticed we're coming to you today via Zoom. Zoom. We're Zooming. We're Zooming. Such a stupid name, Zoom. So stupid. So stupid. It's like one kindergarten or something. Zoom. Yeah, it's like one of those old Batman cartoons, you know, bam, bow, zap. Yeah, like crash, zow, zoom. It's so onomatopoetic. What? Nothing. Um, uh, so on our show today, we're going to talk about how we've been sheltering in place with our stupid families. Oh my God, I want to kill them. Don't get me started. Adam Senior has taken over the kitchen table and has turned it into his office. The man doesn't even have a job right now. And Adam Jr., he hasn't come out of his room since school went online. The other day I picked inside and he's growing a beard. He's 12. I can't wait till this shelter in place is over. You know why? Because of the filth. Ah, oh, so dirty. I got Gary and the kids at home all day, every day, the filthy little beasts. This morning, you know what I did? I went downstairs to take a peek into the kids' rooms. You don't want to do that. Horrific. There were, hand to God, 12 half-eaten bowls of cereal in Katie's room, and the stench wafting out of Josh's room smelled like burnt beans and rotten eggs. What is it with the teenage boys? I don't know. And in the upstairs world, I got Gary, who sheds back hair like a Siberian sheepdog. My God, I've gone through three vacuum cleaner filters already. Oh. Well, what are you going to do? Yeah, they're filthy beasts, but I love them. Oh, no. Here we go. I can't help it. I love them. Okay. Enough. Enough. Lorraine and I uh, want to take the time now to uh, talk about a few of interesting items that we you come across during the sheltering in place. Great. Brianna, what would you like to share? Well, since the lockdown, I've become a full-fledged drunk. I kid you not. I've got the BevMo app on my phone. Uh, Adam Jr. had to help me download it. Uh, get this. They deliver. There's nothing like opening up your front door to a bag of booze that puts joy in your life during a global pandemic. How about you? Yeah, well, you know, whatever gets you through the day. So as for me, now, did any of you imagine that four months ago, you'd be setting your alarm clock to be able to get up early enough to go to the store to buy toilet paper? Don't get me started on the tiki. Yeah, yeah. So by now, my standards are so low that I'm not even looking for shaman anymore. I'm just looking for something that's going to work. So the other day, I picked up this little gem, Suavelle. El papel más higiénico del baño. Ooh, listen to you. But you know, life is too short to be getting up at 6 a.m. and going to five different stores trying to buy toilet paper. Life is too short. I say relax a little bit, loosen up, have a dirty house, have a glass of wine, have two glasses of wine. Who am I, the police? Yeah, yeah, you know what, you know what I say? I say smoke them if you got them. Smoke them if you got them. Live your life. Live your life, for God's and you know what? While you're having your glass of wine, why don't you enjoy this next little skit by the Tam Valley Players? Welcome students to the Mount Tam High School virtual classroom. Now, we're still learning about this new technology, so please be patient and bear with us. Now, I'm going to be keeping track of time and virtually moving you from class to class. 
So now I'm going to hand you over to Mr. Redwood's history class. Mr. Redwood, they're all yours. Good morning, my groovies. Sorry we have to meet like this, but the school board has made it clear that that's the way things are going to be for quite a while. The school board. Don't get me started on that bunch of fascists. I know it's early in the morning, but could you please all turn on your cameras? I, 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 all I can see is blank screens. It's hard to relate to you when I can't see your acne-ridden faces. Yeah, even you, Trevor. Okay, good. First order of business, I have the final essay assignment. The subject is industrialization and its effects on the development of the post-progressive movement in the urban South. It's due next Friday. The school board wants me to share it on some kind of sharing platform, whatever that means. But I'm 70 and I can barely work the copy machine. So I'm just going to hold up this paper and let you do whatever it is you need to do. Oh. Oh. Write it down, take a picture with your Apple camera phones. I don't care, but it's going to be up here for exactly 10 more seconds. And after that, you're just going to have to get it from one of your classmates. Five, four, three, dos, uno. I don't know, Trevor, one of the smart ones. Emily. Uh, that's Emily R, not Emily C. Oh, sorry, Emily C, but, you know, come on. Yes, Trevor, of course you can go to the bathroom. You don't have to ask permission. It's your own house, for Pete's sake. Just remember to mute this time. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. Back to the... I said mute. Trevor, no one wants to hear that. Turn the sound off. Jeez. Thank you. I hope you have a few safety schools picked out, Trevor. At this point, Sonoma State would be a stretch. All right, my groovies, back to the discussion. Remember, this paper is the final assignment of your junior year. I know, far out, right? And we all know that college admissions departments are too lazy to include your senior year transcript. So this paper is quite possibly the most important thing you will do in your entire lives. So no pressure. As we bring this class to a close, let me remind you of the first rule of history. Those who don't learn from history are doomed to repeat it. So for those of you who turned your last essays in late, if you do it again, the outcome will be the same. No grades higher than a C. Can you dig it? Okay, that's it for today. Power to the people. Am I off? Hello? Am I off? <sighs> oh. Uh, yes. <clears throat> well, welcome back. I hope that all of you uh, learned a lot from Mr. Redwood, but now it's time to get our science on with Mr. Stipple. Ah, good morning, children on the cusp of young adulthood. Like so many pupae with prothoraciotropic hormone surging through their collective thorax, ready for metamorphosis. It is unfortunate to have to congregate under such conditions, but these times are nothing if not uncertain. You know who else had something to say about uncertainty? Anyone? Anyone? Heisenberg. Heisenberg. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Nothing? Really? I, I taught you nothing? Okay, a uh, tough crowd. So, for our final project of the year, you will each be dissecting a sheep's heart. Now, where did I put that? Oh, yes. I know you, gross. Actually, only some of them will be used. <laughs> You see what I did there? Uh, nothing? Oh, come on! Uh, yes, Daria. I'm getting to that. We've arranged with Zafeway to make these available from the butcher department. Your hearts will be available for curbside pickup beginning Wednesday. 
Yes, Dylan, of course I'm talking about the strawberry Safeway. We would never send you to the one on Camino Alto. Yes, Jennifer, we're all aware you're vegan. But I don't see what that has to do with anything. You're just cutting it up. No one's asking you to eat it. Oh, okay, okay. So, so cut up a persimmon for all I care. It's virtual. And yes, of course the district will be providing you with the dissecting kits. You know, the scalpels, the, the stainless steel trays, the works. You will need to go to a website, which I am not particularly familiar with, so if I will send, I would need you to open your own account. Just use your email and this code, XR1357D, oh wait, <laughs> that's my email address. Ah, yes, here it is, 165, oh wait, no, that, that's my social security number. Oh look, I'll just email it to you. There, sent. <clears throat> you should all have an email now with the account number. And yes, Aiden. Oh, yeah, the site address. That's a, I'll, I'll send that one in a separate email. Good. Sent. Remember to order that today so you'll have it in time for our next class. All right, my puerile pupils. Have a wondrous and wanton weekend. And remember, if you're not part of the solution, you are part of the precipitate. <laughs> oh, 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 let leave meeting. <clears throat> to introduce Mrs. Creakle's English class, Here's a little bit of literary humor. Why is John Milton a terrible guest at game nights? Anyone? Because when he's around, there's a paradise lost. Get it? Paradise lost? <laughs> Tough crowd. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Oh, hello, class. I am so sorry you have to experience the waning days of your youth under such a heavy sky. But remember the words of the Bard of Manchester. Ever the blooming flower of adversity ensconces the beauty of everlasting grandeur. Now, who has done the reading from last week? Everyone? Someone? Anyone? No one? Oh, well, that's disappointing. Well, what you missed was basically this. Gabriel lost his farm to a sheep stampede and has shown up on Bathsheba's door in search of employment as a destitute yet oh so rugged shepherd. <laughs> I'll say. Now, can anyone tell me what sort of plot device this sets up? Anyone? No one? Now remember, a plot device is any technique in a narrative used to move the plot forward. A well-conceived plot device, one that emerges from the concept genre story of characters, can drive your plot forward and enhance your story and characterization. Dakota, are you snoring? No, no, Dakota with a K, not a C. Oh, how can I wake him up? Oh. oh, well, I guess he needs his rest. Now, AP exams are fast approaching like the Sirocco winds across an acrid Tunisian sky, swift and inevitable. I assume that everyone has memorized the list of rhetorical devices I sent out last week. Remember, do not just skim the prompt. A beautifully written answer to the wrong question will not get you that five. As a warm-up, I thought we'd go over the poem I placed on the wiki yesterday. Did everyone get a chance to read it? Anyone? Uh, no? Well, okay. 
I'll read it now for those of you who need a refresher. At the touch of you, as if you were an archer with your swift hand at the bow, the arrows of delight shot through my body. You were spring, and I the edge of a cliff, and a shining waterfall rushed over me. <sighs> oh dear, I'm sorry, we seem to have run out of time. You know, I'm still waiting on the essays from some of you. I'm serious, just because class is virtual does not mean you are excused from your responsibilities. What's that, Lydia? You need more time? You all need more time? Well, I suppose so, but just do your very best. Before our next class, I want you to read the next poem I posted on Google Classroom. My Love is Like a Red, Red Rose by Robert Burns. Hello? Am I the only one still on? <clears throat> now it's time for the last class of the day, math. I'll hand you over to Mr. Pascal. You can count on him, right? Right? Uh, okay. All right, everybody, settle down. Now, we haven't really covered as much as I'd hoped we would this year. I was kind of hoping we'd catch up during these past few weeks, but looks like that's not going to happen. So, everybody turn to page 193 and, uh, yes, Miles? What do you mean you can't find your book? It's at your house. You're at home. I don't know, look under something. Okay, you got it? Can we go now? Okay, thank you, Miles. So, look at the triangle at the top of the page. Can anyone tell me what the angle ABC is? Really? No one. Not one person knows what this is. No one can come up with the right answer? That's a hint, people. Yes, Braden. No, to be honest, there's not much practical application for this. Well, not for you, anyway. Maybe some of the smart kids will use this in their future. You know, like, like Emily. Uh, Emily R, anyway, not Emily C. I'm sorry, Emily C. Yes, Braden, again? No, I do not want to talk about Ant-Man. We're covering trigonometry here. Sines, cosines, tangents. Yes, Braden, I understand that Ant-Man would be a tangent. Uh, that's kind of funny. Uh, what's that, Ashley? Yes, I'm aware of the inconsistencies. I mean, come on. When Ant-Man shrinks, does his mass stay the same or not? I mean, it's not, is it the density constant or the mass constant? It can't be both. I'm serious here. The first time he shrinks, he hits the floor and he cracks a tile, indicating his mass has remained constant. Later, he's riding on the back of an ordinary ant. I mean, come on, people. Paul Rudd is what, 170, 180? No ant can run with 180 pounds on its back. And when he's fighting in his shrunken state, he punches with a force that certainly implies his mass has not changed. I mean, that one guy? That guy goes flying! He's like he's being punched by a full-grown man! And what's, what's that, Aaron? Yes, Aaron, yeah, I agree. We've gone off topic a bit again. Why does this always seem to happen? So everyone, try to complete Chapter 7, Section 4. If you have any questions, just, just Google it. Google has everything. And don't bother me over the weekend. I'm in Season 4 of Mr. Robot, and that stuff doesn't binge-watch itself, you know. Uh, Principal Willoughby? Principal Willoughby? <coughs> Math! Uh, who? What? what uh, oh, oh, oh. <clears throat> well, uh, I hope your day went well, students. I hope you all learned something. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you on Monday.